Hi, let's talk about what kind of computer you should buy as an architectural designer. And actually, to make it real quick, um, I will be condensing everything into smaller um, segments, smaller video segments. And I will begin with uh, actually explaining what an architectural designer needs in a computer, right? And those are going to be the criteria with which we're going to determine what kind of computer is good for us, right? So the five key things that I'm always looking in a computer, in a laptop in this case, is the CPU, the GPU, RAM, um, hard disk, and the screen, right? Those are the five things. And I will be explaining all of them uh, separately because I think it's important to understand what the hell is going on, right? So before we begin, it's actually one thing I want to address is that Macs, MacBooks, are... I wouldn't encourage you to buy a MacBook, let's say it like that. Not because it's a bad, uh, those are bad machines or anything like that, but the software um, doesn't really work on a Mac that well, or as well as it works on a, you know, your regular Windows laptop. That's just the only reason why I really don't think that a Mac for an architect is a good um, a good tool to have. Let's say it like that. So with that, that out of the way, by the way, those of you who are concerned that, oh crap, I have a Mac, what do I do now? That's fine, you can make it work with a, a few slight adjustments. <laughs> but with that out of the way, Let's start talking about components, like computer components, right? So CPU. So the CPU is the computing processing unit, something like, I don't know. It's the brain of your machine, right? And it's quite important for an architect to have it um, quite fast, quite strong compared to other industries because we're making 3D renderings as well as we're dealing with 3D models. And both of those are quite intensive tasks for the CPU to handle. So that part of the laptop needs to be pretty robust, pretty fast. There are two manufacturers of CPUs, AMD and Intel. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because they have two separate naming conventions that are naming conventions that are similar, but not exactly the same. So I'm going to show example. Let's say I'm going to show an example of the Intel somewhere here, maybe here, I don't know. And I'll try to explain uh, what each part means and which parts are important, right? So Intel Core i7, um, something, something, and the letter, right? Or two letters. So the first thing right there is Intel, right? That's the manufacturer, nothing special about it. Core is always going to be there, don't worry about that. i7. i7 is basically the class. The number is the class of your, um, of your CPU, which you can have i3, i5, i7, or i9. And the higher the number, the higher class of a CPU it is, the faster, initially, the CPU is. Right, so for us as architects, um, everything except i3, I would consider fine. i3 is usually used just for multimedia, you know, for movie watching and so on. It's not that fast of a CPU. i5, i7, i9, sure. If you can get your hands on i9, go for it. Then you have first number of the where, where you have like three or four numbers uh, in this case eight six five zero or sorry four or five numbers eight six five zero right the first number is the generation how old the cpu is right so here the first number is eight um which means that the cpu since we're currently at generation number 11 right so there you would see number 11 here the cpu is like three years old right that that's basically all it is then the rest 650 is whatever don't don't worry about that part at all and the last letter is basically the 
the type of a CPU, right? So what you're looking for in a laptop is definitely not the U. U is, I believe, ultra low voltage or under -volted, something like that. Basically, it means it eats, it doesn't eat that much of electricity, but it's it has less power. Ultra low power, maybe? Eh, I don't know. So it, it doesn't have a lot of power, it doesn't have a lot of heat, uh, but also it has slower performance. What you want is H, or HK or HQ, something with an H, right? H stands for high performance graphics, but we don't care about the graphics. What we care about is mostly the, the performance of it, right? H means, let, let's just put an equal sign there. H equals higher performance, right? And that's basically it, right? So this is how you treat your, or how you read the CPU. Let's move on to, the GPU. So in terms of graphics cards, you actually just have one option, well not option, one manufacturer that you should be looking into. There's technically Nvidia and AMD, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't suggest using AMD graphics just yet. If you're watching this in 2022 though, AMD just fine, uh, you can use AMD graphics. Right now, there are still a few iffy situations with the software and the hardware where they don't really speak that well, but they will eventually. So only NVIDIA. And NVIDIA produces two types of cards that we as architects can use. Those are called uh, GeForce cards, G wait, GTX or RTX, GeForce cards, and then you have Quadro cards. So Quadro cards are super expensive and they are manufactured for 3D modeling, basically. Not just that, artificial intelligence as well, but let's stick to 3D modeling. So they are manufactured for 3D modeling, right? And they are tailored for it, but they are super expensive and I don't think they're worth it at all. Honestly, I don't. So we're left with the GeForce graphics cards, which is basically gamer, you know, gamer cards. An example of it would be GeForce GTX 1650, right? Or 1650 Ti, it doesn't matter. That's the graphics card actually that I am using right now. So I'll break it down. Um, NVIDIA GeForce GTX. So NVIDIA GeForce already talked about that. Uh, GTX is basically... Uh, you have two options, either GTX or RTX. Right now, all of the new graphics cards are RTX, RTX, real-time tracing, ray tracing, I don't know how it's, <laughs> what, what the abbreviation means. Um, and the GTX is the old ones, right? So I'm using an old one. If I could, I would change it to the new one. But the only place where you would really see the difference between GTX and RTX cards is in virtual reality and in uh, like this real-time rendering where you can actually walk around the, the space, the environment, right? So, you know, really doesn't, that doesn't really matter that, that much. So that, that's that part. Then you have uh, 1650 um, and then TI or whatever. Right, so 1650, 16. Um, in in my case, maybe this is this is a bad example, or maybe it's not. It's, it's basically the generation, right? So the generations go like, um, let's start from generation number nine. So so 900s, then you had ten a uh, thousand, right? So instead of I'm doing such a poor job explaining this. You had graphics cards, let's say GeForce, uh, GTX 960, then you had 1060, then you have 1660, or in my case 1650, I'll talk about that part in just a second, then you have 2060, and now you have 3060, right? So it's, uh, the counting is all messed up, don't worry about that. I don't know why, 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 why they're counting like that. Uh, but it's basically the, the generation, right? So since I'm using 1650 graphics card, I can say that it's three years old, right? Um, because in, in between we have the 2060 and the 3060. Okay, so it's two years old. Then we have the, in, in my case, 1650, the 50 part, right? 
So you, this is like the class of the graphics card. You have 50s, you have 60s, you have 70s, 80s, and 90s. So uh, technically, a graphics card can be, uh, let's say, GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, right? So 80 is the, the class. So the cheapest and the weakest one is 50. It's fine, honestly. For, for, for an architect, it's fine. If I could, I would be using tw uh, the 60 or the 70 bracket. 80 and 90 is overkill, in my opinion. And that's all I, I have to say about it. Um, and then the TI, don't worry about any letters at the end of the... Uh, of the name those are just basically you know ti means it has like 10 percent more performance we don't, don't care about those things right so that's basically the the graphics cards now moving on to ram ram is going to be very simple to explain ram is like tempor temporary memory for your computer right so it's a memory that it needs to use right now as it's doing something right so when you're 3d modeling a building the whole damn building is placed into temporary memory right so you kind of under understand where i'm getting at you need a lot of ram technically you could get away with eight gigabytes of ram um, and all of the budget computers use eight gigabytes but i i assure you you would not have a fun time doing so so I would suggest uh, using something like 16 gigabytes. Uh, I am using 16 gigabytes and it's fine. It's okay. But ideally, I would be using 32. When I say 16 is fine, I almost never reach the top. You know, the, the, I almost never fill up the memory with 16. And I've been in the industry for quite a while. So should be absolutely okay for architectural students to have 16. If you have the option, do 32. The speed of RAM doesn't matter at all. Forget about it. Don't worry about it. Then hard disk. Hard disk is basically you just want a SSD. There's like two types, SSD, HDD, right? SSD is solid state drive hard and HDD is hard disk drive. Um, the difference between them is that one is mechanical the other one is digital right so the digital is much faster you want fast memory because your files are going to be big you're going to be moving them around you don't want your um your your hard disk your long-term memory by the way of the computer to slow you down right so you're choosing to just have it um as fast as possible um size wise something above 512 gigabytes um ideally something above one terabyte uh would would do the trick um and then the last thing is screens right so that this is something that differs from other industries we do care about a good screen right we don't want to have complete garbage for a screen as as we're doing the 3d modeling so in terms of screens, there are three types, four types, sorry. There are the TN panels, TN, no, bad, horrible colors, horrible viewing angles, um, really cheap, <laughs> I guess that's, that's a plus, but other than that, super bad, TN panels equals death, no. VA, basically TN panels that are trying to persuade you that they are not TN panels. No, bad. IPS, it's basically LED uh, or, or LCD panels that, are, that have the IPS standard. Good, very good. Um, usually IPS panels are, um, they have the best price performance ratio and I would kind of they really differ in terms of quality from panel to panel, but with IPS, you will not get something that is impossible to work with, right? 
So I would go for an IPS panel. And then the last one is OLED. OLED is a new technology and it's, it's really nice and really expensive. It has super high contrast and it has really good color accuracy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very expensive and it has other, other issues with it as well. I don't think that in terms of price performance, I don't think OLEDs make sense. But if your laptop just happens to have OLED, yay, <laughs> good for you. And that's basically it, right? That's it in terms of uh, what we need to look for in a laptop, right? So now, what? how do you choose? You know, you, you go to any website and there's like a crap ton of, of these laptops. And how do you choose? How do you filter? Uh, how do you filter them out? So I'm actually going to show you how I do that in just a second. Okay, so I'll be showing this on Amazon, I guess, because that's the most common purchase site out there and i will be just going to the top left corner just finding where the laptops are i don't remember where they are oh no oh no wait computers there we go computers of course and then let's find ourselves some uh, computers and tablets there we go laptops perfect okay so now i'm I'm in the laptop section, right? And on the right hand side, I have all of the options to choose from. Uh, to, to choose from. So features and brands, I don't really care. I would uh, untick Apple and tick everything else, but honestly, whatever. I will just be ignoring Apple laptops here. And then for the price, uh, I would be adding price uh, if I were you, right? So, so just uh, knowing to which kind of bracket I fall into. Um, then for operating systems, Windows, Mac, OS, or Chrome, doesn't really matter. We ignore that. Activity also doesn't matter. And then we start getting into the, um, like the knobs that we can actually pull on, right, to, to filter uh, through. So display size. You don't want a laptop that has a screen that's smaller than 15 inches. If you have it, uh, wait, this is getting dark. Oh, that got even darker. There we go. If you have a laptop that's um, that has a screen that's super small, you're not going to have a fun time 3D modeling with it, right? So I'm using 15 or let's scroll down, tick mark on 16, and then I'll put a tick mark on the 17 inches and above as well, right? So a pretty big laptop. Silver technology, we don't care. Of course, every laptop these days has Wi-Fi. We don't even need to tick mark that. All of them will have Wi-Fi. Display type, LCD, LED, OLED, A AMOLED. Oh yeah, there's AMOLED as well. Doesn't matter. Uh, we will be ignoring the display type right now, and we will be using it as a second layer of filtering once we have like a few laptops that are, you know, that, that fit our needs. Right, processor type. Remember processors? We care about i7. I put a tick mark there. Scroll, scroll. We care about i5. I put a tick mark there. Scroll. We care about uh, definitely not Celeron, not i3, but Ryzen 7 though. Um, I didn't talk about Ryzen laptops, but Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and Ryzen 5 are all are all good, right? So I put a tick mark there. Then for the RAM, I will choose 16 and everything above, right? So 16, 24, uh, this is not the best, <laughs> you know, the, not, not the best experience in filtering through these. But yeah, now we have them going. Uh, 12, we can go with 12, but I would prefer to have it at 16. Then number of CPU cores, we don't care. Hard drive size, uh, honestly, I would tick mark uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, but I'm saving time, so I will not. What else is there? Yeah, hard drive type, we do want a solid state drive, right? So I will tick mark that, the SSD one. 
Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Then for graphics card type, there is dedicated and integrated. We do care about it being a dedicated graphics card. Dedicated just means that um, your CPU, your, your processor, doesn't deal with graphics. It has a separate chip. Right? The computer has a separate chip that deals with graphics. So we care, uh, we want it to be dedicated, not integrated. So that's done. And then we have NVIDIA GeForce RTX, GTX, just GeForce, and then a bunch of others, right? GeForce MX series, you don't want that. Don't, don't use that, right? RTX, GTX, or just the plain one. Those are the good ones the ones that you want um i messed up apparently oh if you add if you tick mark the geforce one all the rest disappear okay fine we will be filtering it out just by looking at it and you can see here already you know some pretty nice uh, options um, what else is there? Battery life, we don't care. Flash size, no. Resolution, we don't care. CPU speed, don't care. Okay, so that, that's that, right? I filtered it according to a middle bracket, right? Middle price range bracket. And I'll talk about those in, in just a second. Um, so just like looking at one of these, let's say this one, Acer Predator Helios 300 gaming laptop. Intel i7, so class i7, 10750H, so 10th generation last year, H, good letter, <laughs> NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 laptop, so newest possible graphics card, uh, really powerful, uh, 15.6 inches full hd screen so okay screen um ips display great and 16 I, I guess it's gonna say i'll just open it up i guess it's gonna say 16 gigabytes of ram yes 16 gigabytes ddr4 don't care about that by the way ram uh, 512 gigabytes so this is the temporary memory this is the long-term memory right ssd great so this is a pretty good laptop looks like complete garbage though like what what kind of aesthetic is this but you know that this is a gamer laptop it is what it is also doesn't ship to lithuania i'm currently in lithuania we'll be back in sweden and quite soon actually <clears throat> quite soon so that's how you kind of filter through these lists and then start looking for a pretty good deal right um one thing that's very important to note is that if you're in the lowest possible price bracket, you're looking for the best bargain, you will never get the best price for a new laptop. You need to search for old laptops, um, which is absolutely fine, right? Um, and even, even Amazon uh, sells refurbished laptops. Um, I don't know where, I can't see them right here, but they do. So now on to the, the nice part, right? The, the, the fun part. I actually went through the whole damn Amazon page and I've created this Excel spreadsheet, which is going to be in the description of the video. You can get access to it. And I did two tables on it right on the left hand side you will see best designer SKU laptops from every major company right so i found um like every company as they are making laptops they have certain uh branches of those laptops that are skewed for designers right so for instance msi creator z16 you know apparently it's it's for a for a designer right or acer concept d5 pro and amongst those i found the ones that i think are have the best price to performance ratio and don't really destroy your wallet that much right so that's the left hand side um and i will not be talking about those that much but just trust me i guess uh, these are the best-in-class laptops that are currently available for you as a designer. 
and the prices of them are as listed uh, from the manufacturer so the prices might be uh, higher let's say in europe right if they're manufactured in taiwan then the price like that would be some, uh, like 3400 for xps 17 uh, the, the price like that would only be available in USA and Taiwan and in Europe it would be closer to maybe the same price only in euros, right? That's cool, but the cooler part that I did, you're welcome, is I scrubbed through the whole damn Amazon.com <laughs> page and I found... <clears throat> I, I, I extracted the best deals that I think are a bargain, right? That I think are great. And I also kind of had a few filters. So the one filter is um, that I had, it must ship to ye EU. It must ship to Sweden in particular, right? And the second filter that I had was, well, actually, no, that, that's the only one. Yeah, the, the, I removed the second filter. Don't worry about that, right? And basically, I found three tiers of laptops, right? So tier one, good enough, does the job. I found one, two, three. I found six laptops that are ranging between uh, $590 up to $1,200 for the base price. And with shipping, they range from 800 bucks to one and a half thousand bucks, right? That's with uh, with shipping. So these are like the good enough laptops. You can get a cheaper laptop for sure if you just buy a used one, right? Th these are the new ones, right? So of course you you'll get the cheaper used ones. I uh, I would say that you can get a pretty. No, I I don't want to lie. I I have no idea how cheap laptops are these days, the used ones, so I am not going to guess. Okay, tier two, best price performance laptops, right? You can see the range is pretty close, right? So pretty cramped in together. And it's um, for the base laptop, it's in between 1200, right? So right where we finished off here, and it ends at around 2000, right? Razer Blade is around... Uh, 2000 everything else is 1600 right so the range itself is somewhere around 2000 bucks and this is like the, the the price bracket for the best price performance and i would argue that these laptops would uh, serve you for like six years from six to eight years without any issues and unless they burn or <laughs> or something like that while these ones like the good enough ones will serve you for like five ish years so it's not not like they're bad laptops or anything like that and then i have tier three you can see that the prices are pretty high except for this bad boy right here msi creator 15m and i can actually open it up and show you um this one is real cheap for what it offers and i think it's because it's uh, yeah it is a used one right it's renewed it's refurbished the actual price of a msi creator laptop is a little bit closer to two thousand six hundred dollars while here it's one thousand two hundred so it's like half the price right so get it while it's hot i guess <laughs> Uh, other than that, everything else is around, uh, with shipping is around $3,000 range. Uh, the mo favorite, my favorite is Asus Pro Art. Um, was it 15? I believe it was 15 or was it 17? Like uh, either one of these two, I will be, uh, I would be buying to myself if I had the money right right now especially this one since it has uh um 1100 dollars uh like the discount right um so that is that all of these by the way have either discounts or i just found a a good deal so um hopefully it helps some of you uh, get get a pretty decent laptop 
um what else is there again this this excel spreadsheet is gonna be in the video description you can just click on it uh if you have any questions suggestions what i should be adding to the list and so on uh just write a comment uh, i i do read those and i will be updating this list live um so so this should be kind of if, if you see a different list uh, as as you're checking it out um i just updated it because some probably some laptops were bought out or something like that by the way i'm not sponsored by amazon i probably should tell you that <laughs> it's just i find it convenient to uh to search there it's it's a good global website okay i will not drag out this video any further hope this helps okay bye